Well, a week on from the start of the flat season and the Lincoln, we've got some more action on the level to look forward to. Up in Scotland at Musselburgh, Jason, but it's kind of a similar scenario, isn't it? Soft ground will be all of the day. When will this rain ever stop? Yeah, it's going to be a bit of a test. Um, thankfully, for the for the jockeys, they spent a, a fortune on the track there at Musselburgh. They've got the sanded bit up around the top, top the all-weather bit, and down the bottom, it's actually cambered. Um, so they can really rattle into that bottom turn. They've made massive strides at the at the race course, and they deserve a a good airing. They're a they're a brilliant team up there. Certainly are. Right, four races to look forward to. Then we start with a, a quite tight little three year old handicap as well. Only six of them go uh, over a mile. But say we're testing for these uh, just into the classic generation stage. Yeah, and, and and when you go through them, I mean, Andrew Baldin, his team are operating at a good strike rate at the moment. A lot of people will latch on to Ice Max, you know, Carl Burke and uh, uh, Mohammed Obeid colours. They seem to be coming ever stronger, that particular com combination. However, individualism is a half-brother to subjectivist amongst others and a uh, Sir Ron Priestley and some really good stayers that the Yard have had. The team won it last year. He looks to have been handed a fairly nice mark. I mean, he ran up at Newmarket at the back end and I dare say... He was a little bit big and gangly and weak. So, um, interestingly, a lot more speed on the sire line by too darn hot. But he could be a good way in front of his handicap, Mark. Um, he's going to be punted, I should imagine, but he could be pretty strong. Yeah, Charlie Johnson, good record of the track as well. Always a man to, to look out for. He's also got one in the Silver Arrow at 225, over seven films. But the favourite here, Poet and Master, a bit of a winning machine last season, but... Although only in stall nine, being out wide is not ideal at this seven furlong trip. Yeah, that's that's key. And of course, a lot of these, you know, the likes of a, a Northern Express, Redana, you know, we normally see them in the Thirsk Hunt Cup. Say it very slowly. Um, yeah, we normally see those around that time. And, you know, some old favourites. Boardman has come down to a good mark. Zip ran really well when we saw that last time at Doncaster. That was a very good run. But again, it, it, it becomes a bit of an easy pick. Poet Master, three from three. The only defeat came when he stepped up in distance. All of those other victories over seven furlongs comes from that formidable combination. I think he'll be able to overcome the wide draw. Drawn in nine won't be too much of a problem. No, maybe we can't overcome that. Then he is, as I say, uh, in good fettle. Right, looking at the sprint, then a small field that we're normally accustomed to for this one. Only eight to go to post, but as always with these sprints, it's, uh, you could run it 10 times and have 10 different winners. Yeah, I find that a bit strange that we've ended up with such a small field. You know, we normally sort of uh, associate this with good double-digit number um, of runners in here. Look, Silky Wilkie won it last year. Sam Fielding's not back off, uh, long off a... Uh, an injury, so getting a real good opportunity for Carl Burke, and that's going to drag his weight down. Fine wine, we know, likes to pop along up on the front end. And Zarzini's probably not that well, is not that badly handicapped. I have to say, I keep looking back at Glorious Angel, the way that she ran at Doncaster behind Montesi, that was over six, no problem with a bit of dig in the ground, was only beaten four and a half lengths, got really tired late on, pinged the lids and was off and gone. Doesn't have to make the running, got a good weight. Brandon Wilkie taking fives off. Let's hope that the dead eight go to post because look, got a real good each way look about it. Dead eight, glorious angel, each way. I like it, yes, in the Nick Bradley colours. Right, from the sprinters to the stayers, then we've got the Queen's Cup at 3.35 and this has attracted a decent feel and some old favourites as well. Yeah, I mean, look, Tritonic has been around forever, been really good. Metier will remember him um, doing the, the job for Sappy Osborne at the start of last campaign in the in the Chester Cup. Some really good types, aren't they? Barksha Rocco, remember him being an absolute rocket ship years ago and um, he's he's got to be respected. I have to say that, that Sweet Fantasy looks a fantastic purchase for 30000 for the James Owen Gredley combination, bolted up twice jumping, never tried this far on the level. So it's a little bit of a question mark, but gives us a good bit of wriggle room with the um, with the trip and open to a bit of improvement. So I have to say Sweet Fantasy attracts me. Adrian Keeley has been, um, he's the grandson of Brian Rouse, who many will remember from, from yesteryear. So uh, he's certainly bred for the job. And if there was one at a massive price, 
I think that the, the track doesn't normally lend itself to horses coming from miles off the pace unless they go really quick. But there's no way that evaluation should be the outsider of the party. He's 33, 40 to 1, something like that. He didn't run really well at Southall. There went no gallop and he was a hostage to fortune. He's got a one from one record around this venue over shorter. He stays two miles. He's the outsider that I'd like a pound on. Very nice. Nicely done. Yes. Big field then worth a couple of darts. So, so let's have a quick look at Maidan as well, because obviously it's Dubai World Cup in night. There's plenty of old favourites running on those shows for plenty of money. And the weather is pretty decent over there, as you would expect. And sticking with the theme of the stage, we've got the Dubai Gold Cup and obviously all the regulars that run in the cup races over here, Coltrane, Elder Elrov, Giovaletto, who I know you've had an affinity with, Siskini, Trollerman, of course, the long distance cup hero and... Tower of London, fourth in the Betfred St. Ledger, and a winner in Saudi. I mean, 16 go, and this is a real good contest. Yeah, it is. Um, look, Enemy managed to win the Winter Derby trial over at Southwell. Um, he then goes over, he runs an absolute stormer, and he gets chinned on the line. Tower of London probably would have been an unlucky loser, wouldn't he? Talk about being thrown in the deep end. Kieran Schumacher has got to ride Trollerman from stall number 16. That's the, the new combination. That's going to be very, very tough from there for him, isn't it? Even allowing that it's two miles, but he could step into the Dittori boots with a fantastic ride there. I have to say, Roger Varian's elder elder of. Now, we saw James Doyle. He's only recently back. He had a winner at Kempton. He had a fallout hunting if everybody doesn't know why he's been off games for a, a little while. He likes to go out in the in the winter for, for that discipline. But he's in great form. He's kept himself really, really fit. He looked as good as ever. Why won't Eldar Eldarov get an easy two miles around there on quick ground? It's bowling green flat and he's got a wonderful change of gear. Why won't he get the job done? You very well could do, yes. Roger Varian is a charge elder, elder of then. We'll also have a look at the uh, Dubai turf. And they say you talk about Kieran Schumacher. It's kind of like in with the new, out with the old. But Frankie Dettori does get the leg up on Lord North, looking for a fourth win in this contest. Yeah, that, that would be remarkable. Um, I've got to say, I was slightly... He, he was undercooked, don't get me wrong. He was carrying a bit of condition when he ran in the Winter Derby. But, you you know, John Gosden wouldn't have run him there over that intermediate distance of a mile and three if he didn't think he could get the job done. He didn't, though, did he? He came up short on that occasion. And, I look, is he going to be in the same sort of form? It'll certainly put him spot on for his return and it would be a remarkable record to get the job done. Look, do juice at the... At the top of the market, is it going to be a massive time for the um, the Japanese yet again? And old favourites like Luxembourg. Look, she's been a favourite of mine for a long time, Nashua. She came back, won the Falmouth over a mile in emphatic style. She's really, really fast. Remember, they were trying to stretch her out and get her to go a little bit further. And she's used her pace sometimes in the middle of the races. Holly Doyle is in sparkling form. She's ma a massive price. I can't believe she's 14s somewhere around there. You can you can put me right on that, but she's a, a double-digit price anyway and has a wonderful change of gear. Gosden wouldn't send her over for the fresh air. She's a big each-way player. Well, you are the Nashville big each-way player. Two against the field for Gosden then in the turf, and then he's also got one in the Shima Classic, Emily Upjohn. Uh, see Kieran Schumach on board this. And the Betford dog winner, Augusta Rodan, starts his season here uh, as well. Uh, but the Japanese are out in force. This is an absolute... It's a Shima classic. It's classic by name, not a classic by nature. You know, when you go down through them, I mean, the, the, the likes of uh, a Rebels Romance is off an absolute demolition job. Shea is a regular in this particular contest. Point Lonsdale has been put in there to ensure a really good end-to-end -end gallop for the runners. Emily Upjohn, she's not the easiest conveyance. Now, trust me, Dittori has made her look very simple on occasions, but she can latch onto it and be a little bit awkward. So I feel that Schumacher is going to be tested again there. There are two in here. Look, I think the favourite, when you're not bumping into um, an Equinox, he's going to find this company a little bit easier than he's been racing against, even though it's a worldie of opposition. He, last time he ran over this trip, he won by six wickets in a particularly decent field uh, back home. So I think Liberty Island is strong. However, 
if you want to have a pound each way on one, what about the climb of spirit dancer for the, the, the Richard Fahey team? After he won last time, he said, I have been crying out to run him over a mile and a half. And it's all guns blazing for the Shima Classic. Now, he came from off the pace last time. He was never going any better than right on top of the line. Why won't they, if there's a possibility, why won't he appreciate going up an extra quarter mile? Who knows? Could it be Sir Alex over at Maydan yet again? Yeah, hopefully it is. It could well be at a big price spirit dancer. Huge money spinner for the team. Right, brilliant. Seven races looked at. What would be your strongest fancy of the weekend? I, th I think that um, I've been a big fan of Nashua for a long time and a lot of people still underestimate how much of a change of gear she actually has. And it's been used in the wrong part of the race on occasions. A mile and one, bowling green flat, I think it's absolutely set up for her to run big. I think she's a massive each way player. Fantastic. Cheers again, Jason, for joining us. Musselburgh and Maidan looked at. Jason will be back on Easter Monday to look at the card at Kempton on the weather as well. The flat season really does get underway. Wherever you're back in there this week, the very best of luck. And as always, please gamble responsibly.